thank you for the organizers for the opportunity. Um, this is <clears throat> um, some work that a medical student, Riley Spencer at UCSF um, did, and he couldn't make it, so I'm honored to present it on his behalf. Uh, and this is looking at the comparative efficacy of biologics and oral agents for the treatment of palmoplantar plantar psoriasis and palmoplantar plantar pustulosis, which are much less studied than uh, traditional plaque psoriasis. These are my disclosures, and those of our team. So as many of you know, palmoplantar psoriasis or palmoplantar pustulosis um, have a large negative impact on the quality of life of our patients um, as measured by the, the Dermatology of Life Quality Index. And traditional measurements that, uh, like POSI, which incorporate body surface area, tend to underestimate the uh, impact of these diseases on our, on our patients. Um, in, in the clinic, we know that topicals and phototherapy oftentimes fail to improve disease in PP and PPP. Um, and although we as clinicians oftentimes pull out and use various systemic agents to treat these conditions, the, uh, the comparative efficacy of these agents is not well studied. So here we use the technique of network meta-analysis to uh, examine the published clinical trials to compare the efficacy of biologics and oral agents uh, for these two conditions. So our approach, we first performed a systematic review of phase two through four clinical trials, uh, uh, looking at either biologics or oral agents for uh, palmoplantar plantar psoriasis or palmoplantar plantar pustulosis. We focused on early outcomes, out outcomes at weeks 12 to 16, and most of the trials uh, reported outcomes in sort of two different uh, buckets. One was uh, the assessment of clearance or near clearance by the the PGA scale of zero or one. And the other group of outcomes was 50% improvement in the, the P-POSI or PP-POSI 50, which are sort of the palmoplantar uh, correlates of, of the POSI score. We then performed Bayesian network meta-analysis uh, for these outcomes using random effects modeling. And to compare the relative uh, efficacy of these treatments, we used the uh, surface un under the cumulative wrinkling curve or SUCRA measurement. Uh, so in terms of our results, we identified 26 randomized controlled trials meeting inclusion criteria. This included about 3,000 total patients, breaking down into about 2,500 with uh, palmoplantar psoriasis and about 600 with palmoplantar pustulosis. Uh, for PP, uh, eight different drugs were studied for clearance and seven different drugs were studied for um, the improvement outcome. And then for uh, PPP, uh, both clearance and improvement were studied amongst five different drugs. On the right, you can see an example of a network map of the randomized clinical tri trials studied. Uh, each dot is a study drug, um, and the line between the dots is a uh, cl clinical trial comparison between either a drug and placebo or a drug with another drug. Uh, and you can kind of see an example here for just clearance. So our results. So for palmoplantar psoriasis, network meta-analysis demonstrated that all of the eight uh, treatments studied produced a disease clearance um, much better than placebo. And you can see that in the upper right in figure two. So in the forest plot, you can see that all of the drugs studied um, have a confidence interval that does not uh, span 1.0 on the left. So they're all better than placebo, which is great. Uh, in terms of the relative ranking of efficacy, you can see on the bottom right that for um, for clearance, um, the most efficacious agents were guselkumab first, then bimikizumab, and then adalumumab. And then for improvement, the most efficacious agents were infliximab, then, uh, um, then ixikizumab, and then etanercept. Interestingly, for palmoplantar plantar pustulosis, uh, no, none of the drugs were shown, shown to be more um, effective than placebo in the random effects model. Now, when we did do a sensitivity analysis uh, using fixed effects, we did find that apramilast and guselpumab did show uh, more efficacy than placebo for both disease improvement and clearance. So just to sum up what we found, all examined oral and biologic agents were better than placebo for the treatment of uh, palmoplantar plantar psoriasis. Uh, in the comparative analysis using the super curves, the top drugs for clearance from palmoplantar psoriasis were guselkumab, bimikizumab, and then adalimumab. Uh, and uh, for PPP, it's interesting that the oral and biologic agents examined were, were deemed to be less effective with none um, better than placebo in the, the more stringent NMA. Um, some of the lim limitations of um, this approach is that in the clinical trials, there was um, reported by the authors some degree of misclassification between PP and PPP. And also one of the most important things is that different trials had different outcome measures. So some of the drugs that studied clearance did not study 
uh, improvement and, vi and vice versa. And some of the some of the more recent studies using like IL thirty six inhibitors had um, smaller sample sizes. So thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot. Very nice presentation. Uh, any questions? Great talk. So uh, I have a question because pamphlet psoriasis and pamphlet uh, petulosis is a little different uh, mechanism, I think. So I think, do you have any analysis, uh, meta analysis for uh, uh, pamphlet psoriasis and the other special location psoriasis? Do you have any experience for meta analysis? Uh, that's a great question. I, th I think one of the take homes that I learned from the study is that. Uh, there are, because these drugs work differently for these two conditions, there are underlying genetic and clinical and cytokine differences uh, for these two conditions. Uh, I, um, I haven't seen, we haven't done anything in terms of randomized clinical trials in other sites like scalp or inverse and things like that. Um, we did publish a paper a number of years ago looking at transcriptomic profiling between those different subtypes, and we found that there was a core set of genes that were, were common between all of those subtypes, but there were also unique genes that were different for each of the subtypes. So as uh, Dr. Ward mentioned in, our, in the previous talk, we probably need to use uh, more tailored approaches to treat different subtypes. I, there was two questions, or maybe one in the back was first, very briefly. Dr. Ward? Thank you for your nice Oh, talk. sorry, we have someone at the microphone. Okay. Uh, my question is, in PPP, um, it takes longer time uh, to be uh, normalized or getting better, but um, 12 weeks to uh, 16 weeks is uh, too short to see the efficacy. How, how do you think about it? That's a great point. Uh, these, uh, it can take longer than three to four months to see improvement. So it, uh, we didn't have the data to really do uh, enough data to do, to do an NMA for the longer term outcomes, but that would be something that we'd hope to do in the future. Great point. Thank you. Last question. So how do you think um, these results would change with the IL-36 receptor antagonist? That's a great. It, so the PPP results actually did include some of those those trials, but they were a small number of patients. Um, I don't know. Um, you would think that it would do better for PPP, yeah. right? Um, but I think like larger, longer term studies are needed. Yeah. It doesn't work. Maybe, <laughs> I'm maybe so surprised. A, no, but maybe as a as a, uh, a follow up on that, we yeah. did some expression analysis, and you do in PPP in contrast to GPP. You do not only find TH17 and the neutrophil signature, but also a TH1 signature. So it might be that in PPP posturizers, we need a more broader approach, and that might maybe a premilast is a, a better approach now, 36 uh, receptor blockade. Thank you, Dr. More, more things to do. Thanks a lot.